Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kodrowski and this organic chemistry video covers factors affecting the E1 mechanism. The E1 mechanism is a reaction between an alkyl halide or other substrate that has a good leaving group. That substrate has an alpha position and a beta position. On the alpha position there's a leaving group and on the beta position there's at least one hydrogen, a proton that can get plucked off. The other reactant is a weak base. In the first step, the slow step, the leaving group leaves and that generates a carbocation intermediate. Then in the second step, the fast step, the weak base deprotonates the beta position to give an alkene product which has a double bond between the alpha position and the beta position. The other product is a conjugate acid and the leaving group. There are a number of factors that influence the E1 reaction. The first is the substitution of the alkyl halide substrate. Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? The big question is, what are these R groups? Are they hydrogens or are they carbon groups? That influences the rate of the reaction. There's also leaving group quality. How good of a leaving group is X? Then there's reaction solvent. What solvent are the reactants dissolved in? Base is not included in this list. Base doesn't impact the E1 reaction because it isn't involved in the rate determining step. The first step, the slow step, just involves the alkyl halide forming a carbocation. The weak base doesn't get involved in that first step. It only gets involved in the second step, which is fast. Since carbocations are intermediates in the E1 mechanism, they influence the reaction rate. Here's a listing of carbocations that could be involved in an E1 mechanism. There are three different levels of substitution. There's primary carbocations, which have one R group. There's secondary carbocations, which have two. And then there's tertiary carbocations, which have three R groups attached to the carbocation carbon. As was discussed in a previous video, each of these R groups stabilizes the carbocation a little bit and helps make it more stable. The stability trends for carbocations go from less stable primary to more stable at the tertiary end. The stabilities of carbocations influence the rate of the reaction and the trend is slower E1s with primary and faster E1s with tertiary. More highly substituted carbocations give faster E1 mechanisms. So this is the same trend as, as in the SN1 mechanism, and the reason is, is that both E1 and SN1 go through the same carbocation intermediate. So it makes sense that the factors that influence E1 and SN1 would be similar. Carbocations are also influenced by resonance. So in addition to substitution, resonance can also stabilize carbocations and can also influence E1 rate. We'll take a look at two different carbocations. There's the carbocation on the left here, which is a primary carbocation. Compare that to the carbocation on the right, which is also primary carbocation, but has a double bond next door. That difference is significant because electrons can be distributed or shared differently to give a resonance structure, and that resonance structure has delocalized positive charge. Resonance delocalized charge is more stable than localized charge, which is what's present in the left-hand structure. So this positive charge is stuck on that carbon and it's not shared with any other carbons, which makes the structure on the left less stable and the structure on the right more stable. This helps speed up the E1 reaction for the resonance stabilized cation. Slower E1 to faster E1 with the more stable carbocation. The next factor is leaving group. Leaving group affects the E1 reaction rate. In the two steps, the leaving group leaves in the first step, the slow step, the rate limiting step. Therefore, the leaving group affects the E1 reaction rate. A good leaving group like chloride, bromide, or iodide is needed. These all leave as weak bases, chloride, bromide, or iodide. The leaving group needs to be a weak base. Solvent also affects the E1 reaction rate, and the reason is, is the carbocation intermediate is very polar, and polar protic solvents, which contain OH or NH, solvate these species, these polar species, better than polar aprotic solvents. The carbocation is well solvated by polar protic solvents, as is the leaving group X-. That's one of the things that helps make the E1 reaction faster, is strong solvation of those polar intermediates. Better solvation makes carbocations more stable, which makes them form faster. This helps speed up the E1 mechanism. The next feature about E1 reactions is that they follow Zaitsev's rule. This is something that we introduced with E2 mechanisms, but it also holds for E1. In elimination reactions where more than one alkene is produced, the major product is the most stable alkene. This is true both in E1 and in E2. Here's an example with a tertiary alkyl bromide. This product has an alpha position that the leaving group is attached to, and there's a beta-1 position, the methyl group, and there's two identical beta-2 positions. 
The first step would be the leaving group leaving to give a carbocation with the alpha and beta positions shown here. Each one of these positions could react in turn. If beta-1 reacts and the base deprotonates the beta-1 position, the electrons flow to give a double bond between the alpha and beta-1 position. Alternatively, the base might deprotonate the beta-2 position. If the beta-2 position reacts, the electrons would flow this way to give an alkene with a double bond between the alpha and beta-2 positions. Now, the differences in these alkenes is they have different substitutions. The top alkene is a di-substituted alkene, while the lower alkene is a tri-substituted alkene. Based on the rules that we established for alkenes, the upper alkene is less stable and the lower alkene is more stable. Therefore, by this Zaitsev's rule, the top product would be minor while the lower product would be major. This is something that E1 and E2 have in common. E1 is a regioselective reaction, and that means that one constitutional isomer product is the major product, and in this case, the tri-substituted, more highly substituted alkene is favored. This is similar to E2 in that both reactions prefer the more highly substituted product. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.